What's going on everyone, this is Dom, and today we are talking about the Nothing Phone 2.0, and I've been using it for about a week or so, and I'm gonna give you my thoughts and opinions. First off, coming from the experience of someone that hasn't used the Nothing Phone 1, I'm going to set that off to the side for now because I don't wanna make a lot of comparisons between this and the first generation, because honestly, a lot of you might know if you're familiar with the first generation of this phone, this is not a worthy upgrade. You like, I don't think you need to run out and upgrade to Nothing Phone 2.0 if you have the first generation. And that's just my opinion. You can let me know if yours differs down in the comment section. But with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and just talk about this 2.0 version as a phone by itself in its own universe with all the other smartphones that we have out right now. So this phone has a lot going for it in the looks department. And I mean, honestly, that's the reason why I gravitate towards this the most is because it just looks super clean. I mean, we have this design on the back that kind of looks like an exposed but like muted kind of look there. And we have these curved edges on the back here, which really makes it nice to hold in the hand. And it's just got a kind of a squared off iPhone like body. And you know what? The whole thing just feels really good in the hand. It looks really good. It's very visually appealing. And that's what draws me to this the most. Now, speaking of the back, we gotta talk about the glyph system because this is something that's new to me being new to nothing as a company in general. And you know what? I think the glyph system is cool. I like that um, we do have more customization than was available on the first generation. And I like that uh, it lights up and kind of notifies you uh, without being disturbing in your environment, I guess, unless you're in a dark environment. But the glyph system is pretty cool, but that's assuming that you're flipping your phone face down every time you put your phone down. And I don't know about you, but I rarely do that. I prefer to have my phone face up so I can see the notifications as they come in. Sometimes I'll have it like leaning against the desk or something so that it's just facing me right, right away and notifications pop up. I'm able to see those and address those. But I do think that there's something to this glyph system. I mean, part of it can be used as a battery indicator charger. Um, we do have a customizer that will allow you to customize your own glyph notification patterns, which is pretty cool. And a lot of this is software driven and software based. You can actually turn the thing on to use as a flashlight, which is pretty cool. You can use it inside of a video recording, which is also a cool little feature. And there's just a lot of these little features in here that I think make it unique. And really um, the design plus the glyphs, I wish I could have the glyphs on all the time because I just think that looks freaking cool, right? Just uh, like these cool patterns lit up on the back of the phone. It looks pretty awesome in my opinion. Now with that design and the functionality and stuff and the glyph system, like I said, we have to have software to be able to control that. And there is software specific to the glyph interface here that will allow you to customize things, like I said, and make your own choices and make it unique to your own experience. But the software for Nothing OS 2, I believe, is just, it's very plain and simple. And I like that about it. I am not a big fan of very cluttered over the skinned interfaces that add a lot of features that I'm never going to use. And Nothing Phone 2.0 definitely solidifies its place in my life by having a clean operating system with little features here or there that are very thoughtful. And I, I think that overall, it gets the job done. Now around the front side, we have a 6.7 inch display and it's up to 120 Hertz with a resolution of 2412 by 1080. And people are gonna say, oh, 1080p panel. Honestly, the thing looks tack sharp. It looks really good and the refresh rate is really nice. I have mine set to dynamic so that it will dynamically adjust the, dis the refresh rate as needed, but you can set bump it all the way up to high or you can have it set to low. There are a few options in there to customize that. Now with the display and on the inside of the phone are where you start to see that this is more of a mid-range device. So we have the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 inside of here, which is last year's chip, but that's not that big of a deal. It's tried and true. And honestly, if they had the most newest processor inside of this thing, would it really make a difference in performance? I think you get to diminishing returns when you start going above and beyond in things that people just aren't taking advantage of. Now that doesn't account for how well this will hold up over time, let's say in a couple of years, but right now, out of the box, over the last week or so, this thing has been plenty snappy for my needs, and I'm sure it'll be plenty snappy for yours. So we do have an in-display fingerprint sensor here, which, I mean, is expected at this point in the game. It's 2023, everybody's gotta have an in-display fingerprint sensor. That's not really what makes it great. It is nice and fast though, which I do appreciate. And you know what? I think that, honestly, there's a lot to love about this phone. But I will say, before I get into anything else with this, it is, 
it is not cheap. I mean, it's a $600 smartphone, and you know what? That is a mid-range smartphone with today's prices, but that doesn't mean that $600 is just easy for anybody to cough up, especially when you're investing in a phone that you're going to be using for two, three, four years of time. Now around the backside, we have dual 50 megapixel sensors. One is an ultra wide lens and one is a standard lens. And you know what? I'm very happy that we have a nice big megapixel count on the uh, on the ultra wide camera. That just makes me happy inside because I love the ultra wide camera and a lot of people will put that one as the one with lower megapixels and give us like an optical zoom with higher megapixels. Now as far as camera quality goes, you know what? It's a mid-range phone, but honestly, it's not that difficult for us to get good quality photos out of a smartphone these days. And I think that the Nothing Phone 2 totally delivers on that. It's not going to be anything that's going to blow your socks off, but it's not a bad camera, especially for the money. I mean, there's a 50 megapixel main sensor in here, which does absolutely phenomenal in my opinion. And I don't think that anybody's going to have any problem taking photos with this, at least at, at least in, in anytime soon. I mean. Like I said, it's not rocket science these days to put together a decent camera on a smartphone, and I think that nothing has totally delivered in this department, but if you wanna see more full resolution photos, um, I will leave a link down in the description below for you so you can check those out from the Nothing Phone 2.0 right here. On top of that, we do have a nice 32 megapixel front-facing camera, which is cool. Um, I'm not a big selfie taker, so that doesn't matter a lot for me, but maybe it will for you. But let's talk about battery life in this guy right here. Inside of this, we have a 4,700 milliamp hour battery. We also do have wireless Qi charging, which is nice, and we have fast charging, which I believe can go zero to 100 in just under an hour. Um, but as far as the battery life is concerned, I can throw out numbers and statistics all day long, but nothing is going to compare to you actually using the phone for yourself because everybody has different usages. And I can throw out my five, six hours of screen on time and say that I can make it through the, the whole day, but you might use your phone more than I do. I personally think that I am a heavy smartphone user and for me to get that kind of screen on time out of a smartphone seems about baseline average for me for most smartphones that I use. So I would say that this just falls in the category of pretty good. I think that battery life statistics don't mean much unless you're comparing it to every other smartphone that that person has used. And for me, this kind of falls in line with my expectations. So really, what can I say about the Nothing Phone 2? It's a solid smartphone. For $600, I think it's a solid smartphone. $600 is by no means cheap in any way, and it being more expensive than the first generation, well, it does mean that you get more bells and whistles on the inside and the outside, which is great, and I love to see improvement, but this is kind of like an S model update. It, it is a mediocre update from the first generation. So like I said at the beginning of this video, if you have the first generation, you probably don't need to run out and upgrade to the second generation because your first generation is gonna do you just fine. But I think that if you're looking for a solid smartphone that won't break the bank, I think that Nothing Phone 2 is definitely something to take a look at. I think that it's got an attractive design. It feels really good in the hand. It feels solid and well built. That's what I like about it the most. It's just got some heft to it that feels like a solid smartphone. And I definitely appreciate that in a day and age where we sometimes have very flimsy and um, fragile feeling smartphones, but I think that Nothing Phone 2 is built well. It's got nice software features to it. It's got little quirks with the widgets and the customization that you can do inside of the operating system and everything else that comes along with that. And I think that if you're looking for a solid smartphone, you might like this too, but I would love to know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments section below. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to hit the thumbs up button. If you're new around here to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified when new videos like this drop in the near future. Uh, I appreciate nothing sending this out to me to show all of you. And I would love to know your thoughts, like I said. Thank you so much for watching everyone. Once again, this is Dom and I will catch you in the next video.